These are the best K-pop albums of all time, according to the internet. But are we really sure about that? My playlist is as dead as my soul, and today we're gonna be reviewing these beloved K-pop albums to find some great songs we could revive the playlist with. Some of these may be good. Yeah, this one is pretty good. While the others... Oh my god, that is shocking. Not so much. Welcome Album of the Year, a music database where we can find out what people believe are the best K-pop albums of all time. We're gonna be checking out the top 5, just as a way to expand my music taste. As always, we gotta stay curious. Red Velvet's second album, Perfect Velvet, was released in 2017 with a score rating of 82. Red Velvet is a group that dabbles in two concepts of the opposite spectrums. Their red side has a more lively, cute concept to it, while their velvet side includes a more sophisticated girl crush concept. Which is, yeah I can't really tell but I think this one's their red concept. Coming into this project, I've definitely enjoyed way more of their red side more than their velvet side. But this album definitely challenges that statement of mine. Perfect Velvet takes element from multiple genres, so be it trap, hip hop, synth pop like look how long this list is fusing those genres into an album full of creative futuristic soundscapes the first half of this project definitely fits my style way more as the project starts off with a hard-hitting title track peekaboo a robust halloween trap banger with a really catchy ladder chorus <laughs> Both Look and I Just bring in a more video game aesthetic to the project, and they're both really enchanting in their own way. Look is a favorite of mine, with a dazzling synth stab which creates an immaculate vibe on here. Perfect 10 and Moonlight I'm both indifferent to, as they have some pretty tame aesthetics compared to the first three tracks on this album. Attaboy comes off as the worst track here, as the whole track has a really irritating sound to it. Yeah, personally, that is horror. The popular B-side Kingdom Come, I feel is carried by the lush vocal melodies on here. I enjoyed this chorus even though the instrumental is pretty sterile on its own. Overall, the album does have a lot of interesting ideas that, if packaged in a more fleshed out and concise project, would have been one for the record books. This album gets a rating of 62, and the song we're gonna be adding to the playlist is the electrifying I Just. Okay, I think I'm craving for a more relaxing record. Shiny's Jonghyun released one of his last projects with the compilation album Story OP2, receiving a score of 82 and being one of the first K-pop albums to be self-written and self-composed by a member from an idol group, this project is very different from the rest of the albums that people believe are the best. The album, for the most part, feels like a really warm hug on a cold lonely night, on a very comforting and personal level. 1000 is a wonderful bittersweet acoustic ballad that has become a huge favorite of mine, much thanks to Jonghyun's delicate delicate vocals that are very healing to the soul. Throughout the album, Jonghyun's vocals enhance the aesthetic of every single track. He has a mesmerizing cadence on the track Love Is So Nice, and Blinking Game, oh my god this one was very romantic in a 50s classic pop style. The chemistry of Taeyeon and Jonghyun on the title track Lonely is definitely a standout, as I love the way their voices bounce off of each other, making the listener have a sense of relatability and realize that they're not the only ones going through the same struggles. Wow, I wonder what the lyrics are about. Baby, so oh wow, I never would have guessed that one. The popular b-side Let Me Out doesn't really connect with me, as I find this melodramatic soundscape pretty cliche on here. There are still some other gripes I have on this project, including some pretty tame instrumentals on Fireplace and Elevator. And just swap around the tracklist with Our Season being the closer for this album, as I feel it finishes off the record in a more conclusive, positive way, rather than Where Are You. Jonghyun has left behind an album that isn't perfect by all means but it has definitely connected with me on a deeper level than most K-pop albums out there. I'm gonna be adding 1000 to the playlist because sometimes men needs hugs too. You did good on this one, my G. The critically acclaimed Pink Tape by FX is touted by many as one of the greatest K-pop albums of all time. Released in 2013, FX had slapped an array of MIDI sounds onto a wall and amalgamated a cohesive 12-track full-length LP, a very rare feat for this industry. From start to finish, this album experience had just enough variety and daringness to keep it entertaining throughout, with some real electronic bangers on here. Multiple catchy choruses, blissful peaks being reached, including the grandiose track Airplane. Those lyrics are jokes. It just comes out of nowhere, but it makes for a banger club track. Step hones in on the same club banger aesthetic with remnants of some early 2010s EDM pop tracks. 
Even the more conventional cuts on this record still sound pretty good, with Signal being one of my favorites. A more A-pink, sophisticated aesthetic to it that is so fun to listen to. Goodbye Summer is a relaxing pop ballad that is pretty healing to listen to. Shadow is probably the most innovative record on here, with an instantly memorable hook refrain on top of this minimalistic ear candy instrumental. While the title track Ram Pam Pam Pam, even though it's not really the most engaging track on this whole project, it still sets a very good first impression as an intro for this album. The project does sometimes fall into some pretty mundane elements the EDM genre has, such as Snapshot, and even Pretty Girl's marching chorus doesn't really stand out. FX has pulled off a great experimental album that warrants a listen at least once in your life. This album is getting a 73, with Airplane being added to the playlist. Wonder Girls' is Reboot, the album that marks the return of Sunmi, a member of the group that returned after going on a 5 year hiatus. And my god did the Wonder Girls return with a bang. This album has a really unique, entertaining experience to it, that includes some of the blissful highs in Carly Rae Jepsen's emotion, in a more 80s pop inspired sound. The intro Baby Don't Play sets the bar high for this project right off the bat, an irresistibly groovy record with some really nice retro elements that make this dazzling track stand out even more. There are very little moments on this record where you're not up on your feet just dancing your heart out. Candle, Rewind, and John Doe being one of the more infectious choruses on here. That descending vocal line on top of those festive elements, oh wee, creative and fun. Oppa on the other hand, I don't know whether I like the song or if I think it's just fine. The kids bop childish pre-chorus is a bit too cliche for me, but then the track just blossoms into yet again another synth banger chorus. I think I'm leaning towards more liking it. I definitely enjoyed this record way more when they were striving for a more dance heavy soundscape. The two more softer tracks on the back end were just fine, yet again it was just pretty generic. I do like the soulful harmonies on Remember though. This record executes in an 80s pop sound very well, with a ton of great tracks on here. Candle is going on our playlist for this one. Odd Eye Circle, with the highest score of 84, Max and Match is a reissue of the subgroup's debut EP, Mix and Match. And no doubt about it, this one deserves the praise it gets. This 4-track album run, 5 if you count the intro, has some pretty stellar moments on it. Banger after banger, this project is a tight collection of electronic, somewhat psychedelic pop music with some really riveting soundscapes. Sweet Crazy Love is a mind-bending, almost hallucinative synth-pop track, with a pre-chorus that builds up to an entrancing chorus. A huge start to the record. That's followed by a sleek Sin City pop banger in Uncover, which is then followed by the glitchy synth pop banger in Girlfront, which is then followed by a wonderful carefree tropical record in Lunatic. <laughs> The hypnotic vocals, the booming up-tempo instrumental, those are just some key elements that make this track such a thrilling record. The back end of this album does dip a little bit in quality, as the subdued aesthetic of these tracks doesn't really hit the peaks of the stunning first half of the record. Odd Front is a remix of the title track Girlfront that personally would have been better off left out of the album. I prefer the way more vibrant soundscape on the original rather than this more EDM trap banger aesthetic that isn't really as engaging as the original. I feel like off this record alone, it makes sense why this subgroup has such a loyal fan base in the more, I guess, cultured K-pop fans, with Max and Match being a sporadic synth pop record with some pretty average lows and some pretty high highs. And Sweet Crazy Love is the final song that's gonna be added to our playlist. And our playlist is pretty stacked now. Always stay curious, since you never know what new song could be added to the soundtrack of your life. This playlist, alongside a bunch of other songs, will be included in the description below, and you know damn well we gon' make it.